When I was younger, there was a TV show called Let's Make a Deal. Maybe you remember it with Monty Hall. The, the big thing about that show, this game show, was at the very end, they would have a contestant with three doors, and they could pick one of them. So they'd pick a door, and then Monty Hall would show them the booby prize behind the other door, and then they could say, I want to take the door I have, or I want to swap with the other unopened door. And behind one of them is a car, and behind the other one is like a goat or something lame. So the strategy was to pick the right door. Now, if you're a PC on a network and you're trying to find a default gateway, we really don't care which door we use. We just want to use a door. And that's where gateway load balancing protocol comes in. Check this out. The three routers are all going to be managing virtual MAC addresses. And then when somebody does an ARP request, the active virtual gateway is going to respond with one of those three virtual MAC addresses. If we have four routers, there will be four virtual MAC addresses. And that's how gateway load balancing protocol works. It lies. It lies about the layer to address that the PC should use to reach a default gateway. I'm going to walk you through step by step how to set it up, test it, and to verify it. Let's get started. Our objectives of Gateway Load Balancing Protocol are really simple. We want to provide fault tolerance for behalf of this PC and all of the other devices that need a default gateway on this subnet of 10.0.0. So the PC has the IP address of 10.0.0.22, and it's got a default gateway of 10.0050. Now, just like HSRP, instead of using that physical address on any one of these routers, we're going to use this 10.0050 as a virtual address and have all of these routers work together to support that IP address. Now, some basics that are in place. This PC right here today is being played by a Cisco router. So we look at the contents of this PC and do a show IP route static. It's got a static default route that says my default gateway is 10.0.0.50. That's already in place. And if we do do a show of the IP interfaces, it shows that we have an IP address of 10.0.0.22. And it does indeed have a 24-bit mask as well. So that part's all set up. So now for the secret. R1 and R2 and R3, the way Gateway Load Balancing Protocol operates is somebody's got to be in charge. And they call this router, who's going to be in charge, the AVG, or the Active Virtual Gateway. And you might ask yourself, well, what exactly does an Active Virtual Gateway do? Sounds so official. Well, here's what he does. He is going to go ahead and he is going to assign virtual MAC addresses to himself and to everybody else who wants to play the game called Gateway Load Balancing Protocol for the group that he's the actual active virtual gateway of. So R1 and R2 and R3, once they're all configured, they'll have not only their burned-in MAC addresses, but they'll also be supporting a unique virtual MAC address assigned by the active virtual gateway. So that's the first thing he does. They have an election. The device that has the highest priority gets to become the active virtual gateway. And then he or she assigns out virtual MAC addresses. Step number one. Step number two is R1, if he is the active virtual gateway, he is going to be listening for all of the ARP requests in this broadcast domain. So when a broadcast request comes in, R1, because he is the active virtual gateway, he's going to respond to it. And this is where the magic comes in. R1 knows exactly the distribution of how many people have been given the ARP response of the MAC address R1's managing versus the MAC address that R2's managing versus the MAC address that r is managing. So if everything was equal, R1 would hand out the first MAC address as an ARP response, saying for the default gateway of 10.0.0.50, it's the MAC address I'm managing. And then for the next client's ARP request, maybe we hand out the MAC address that R2 is managing. And then R3 is managing. So we're load balancing by lying. That's what we're doing. We're lying about giving back the layer 2 address of the next hop. So if I have 200 PCs on this, let's say 300 PCs on this network, uh, which we don't have enough IP address space. So let's count it down to 30 IP addresses on this network. 10 of them, if we're doing equal cost balancing here, 10 of them would have the layer 2 address that R1's using, 10 would have R2, and 10 would have R3 if we kept all the weighting equal. And that's how it operates. We also have fault tolerance. So these devices, R1, R2, and R3, are all acting as virtual forwarders, meaning they've been given a virtual MAC address and they're active for those MAC addresses. And if the active virtual gateway, the King Kong, goes away, the other two will notice, and then the one with the highest priority will take over. 
if we have somebody who's managing, for example, R2, who's managing a virtual MAC address, and R2 goes down, one of the other routers will take responsibility for that MAC address, and the traffic will still flow through the network. So I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step the configuration. We'll go to R1, and we'll start there. And in configuration mode, I'm going to put it all in, and then we'll simply talk about it as we go through. From configuration mode, we simply go in and specify that we want to use GLBP on this interface right here. And we're going to specify we're going to use group one. You can use group two, group three. It really doesn't matter. And we're going to specify the virtual IP address we're going to support. I'm going to give R1 a priority of 110, which is higher than the default of 100. And I'm going to give him a weighting of five. A weighting of five means nothing if he's the only virtual router. However, if we give different weightings to different devices, we can proportionally load balance based on the weightings. I'm also specifying an authentication key that we're going to use to authenticate with the updates from each other, the other members in the group, so that just not any rogue device can jump in. And I'm also going to tell them to go ahead and preempt. The preempt keyword says, hey, listen, if I see that somebody else has a priority of 100 and I've got a priority of 110, this preempt keyword says I get to talk to you, have a conversation, and I get to take over the role of the active virtual gateway. That's what that's all about. And the load balancing weighted says we want to proportionally load balance based on the actual weightings. Now, right now, R1 is it. I mean, if this PC wants to send traffic to the default gateway, R1 is going to respond. So let's take a moment and look at the details. Let's simply do a show of GLBP. And it's fascinating output here. It's, so, it's specifying the virtual address is 10 the hello and the dead time interval for neighbors is 3 and 10 seconds, respectively. And it also shows us that we're using authentication and that preempt is enabled. Now, this is showing who the active virtual gateway is. And because there's only one device configured so far, it's us. Now, the moment a second device begins in the group, if it doesn't preempt and become the active virtual gateway because of a higher priority, it's going to become the standby. So in a few moments, when we configure our two, It'll assume the role of standby, who's looking out for the active. And if he goes down, he's going to take over that role of active. Now, here's our waiting. There's our priority we configured. There's our waiting of five. Again, it means nothing unless we apply another. We have different waitings on all three routers. So if I have a waiting of five here and five here and five here, it would be equal cost ARP responses from the active virtual gateway for each of their managed MAC addresses. So here it's showing group members. And so far, it's just us. Now, look at that MAC address. This is the burned-in MAC address. <laughs> OK, who's kidding who? This is an assigned MAC address that I assigned to R1. Why? Because in the education space that we're in, seeing this number, you'll recognize, oh, that is the interface MAC address for R1s, FA00. And guess what it is for R2? It's 0022.2222, et cetera, for 48 bits. And the same thing for R3. It's 0033. That way you'll see exactly what that is. And it's specifying that we're actively forwarding. And here is the virtual MAC address that we're managing. So here's the story. R1 brought up gateway load balancing protocol, looked around, sent the little hello messages, which are using UDP. And he discovered there's no active virtual gateway. So he assumed the role. He said, great, I'm it. I won the election. That's this part right here. He's active. He is the, the King Kong. And then he said, OK, I need to assign everybody in the group a virtual MAC address. So he started with himself. So 01 is the group membership. And 01 is the first virtual MAC, uh, first virtual device or virtual forwarder, forwarder in that group. And that's what that's specifying right there. So if we go down just a little bit, that's pretty much it. There's our weighting of five, which is also specified right here. And we're set. So this PC should be able to forward traffic now through the network. But let's go ahead and make this fault tolerant. Let's bring up R2. So on R2, we'll just hustle over there by clicking here. And on R2, let's do the same configuration. But this time, let's specify a priority of 100. So 100 is a little bit less than 110, so he won't take over, because I do want to configure preempt on all of these. So I'm going to specify a priority of 100 and a weighting of 6. So the previous one had a weighting of 5. This guy will have a weighting of 6, which means the active virtual gateway will hand out the virtual MAC address assigned to R2 a little bit more often than he will hand out the MAC address that he is managing personally. We'll put on the authentication key just to verify that no one else can 
jump in the party and mess up our gateway load balancing protocol. And I'm also gives the preempt keyword as well. So R2 is always paying attention. If he sees an active virtual gateway that has a priority that is less than his, he is going to ask to take over the responsibility. And if we just give this a moment to converge, and I'll leave this in real time, and we do a, let's just take one more moment, because he should come up as the standby as well. So R1 is the primary active virtual gateway, and R2 should become the standby. So to verify, let's do a show gateway load balancing protocol. If it hasn't happened quite what yet, we'll give another moment. So here it's saying that the active router is 10.0.0.1. Oh, there we go. And the standby is local. I must have missed the console message for that. It's specifying that its local weight is 6 that we just configured. It also specifies who the group members are. So R1's real MAC address is this guy. R2's real MAC address is this guy. And it also shows what virtual MAC addresses they're managing. So this is from R2's perspective saying, I know that R1 is managing this MAC address, the virtual MAC address as a virtual forwarder, and I, locally, am managing this MAC address as a virtual forwarder. Let's bring on the third one. The third one is going to be R3, and it's going to be more of the same, except this time I'm going to change the weighting and also the priority so we don't run into anybody. So on R3, we'll simply go ahead and go into configuration mode, and in interface FA00, which is right here, we'll simply specify the gateway load balancing virtual IP address, the priority a little lower than R2, and then the weighting of 7. Now, why am I going in these directions? Just for fun. Wait, what we're doing here is we're supposing R1 is the highest priority, R2 is the next highest, and R3 is the least highest. But as far as weighting goes, I'm making R3 the highest with 7, R2 the next uh, lowest with 6, and R1 with 5. So if there's a lot of ARP responses going out, eventually... We're going to have the most ARP responses with R3's virtual MAC address being handed out. And then the next up in line will be R2's and the least will be R1's. So you can get proportional and crazy. Why would we want R1 to have fewer MAC addresses that he's managing handed out? Well, maybe if these are all equal routers, we know that R1's going to have responsibility being the active virtual gateway. So maybe we give him a few less MAC addresses or a few, we hand out those MAC addresses fewer times so he has less traffic to actually forward. So R3 is going to have the most work, R2 is going to have the next, and then R1 will have the least. So if we go down to R3, which we're at right here, and we do a show gateway load balancing protocol, and it's going to specify the active router. That's this guy right here. The active virtual gateway is 10.0.0.1. The standby is 10.0.0.2 because he had the next highest priority, and I'm nothing as far as the active virtual gateway, but R3 is a virtual forwarder as is R1, R2, and R3, for a specific MAC address. If we scroll down a little bit, here's forwarder 3, and that's us. It's local. Active is local for that MAC address, and that is the virtual MAC address that we are managing. So that's the configuration for it. Now, what can we do to test this? Now comes the fun part. Now, to verify this works, let's jump over to PC1, which, is, again, is being played by an iOS router. And on this device, let's do a show ARP, just to verify that our ARP cache is empty, with the exception of our own IP address, which is normal for a Cisco router. It wasn't dynamically learned. It was simply known. And let's do a debug as well. Let's do a debug of ARP, so we can actually see the play-by-play. -play. And we'll ping 123.0.0.4. Now, before we press Enter, this is the 123 network over here. We're simply pinging... R4's FA00 interface. So the PC or this device is saying, is that IP address, is it local or is it remote? And because it's remote, it's going to try to use its default gateway, which is 10.0.0.50, which will cause one of these devices to go ahead and be used. Now, the play-by-play -play is this. R1, when this client does the ARP request, because R1's the active virtual gateway, he is going to assign the MAC address or they assign the ARP request back to this PC. And he is going to specify probably R3's virtual MAC address. Why? Because R3 has the highest weighting. And as a result, I think this one's five, this guy's six, this guy's seven. R1 is going to give it because he hasn't handed out any ARP responses yet. He'll probably give it to the one with the highest weighting to begin with. Or at least that's what I, I hope happens. All right, so let's do a ping. Debugging is on. And our ping is off to the races. Okay, so we got a couple pings that got in. Uh, the ARP resolution took a moment. But look at the response. Here's our ARP response right there. 
the ARP response showed the 0103 address being given back to us. Now also what's happening, which is worthy of note, is that we also have a ARP response for R3, and that's for the return packet. See, with IP, the ping went out at layer two address that R3 was managing, forwarded it to R4, and it appears that R4 forwarded it back through R3, and then R3 needed to resolve the layer two address of 10.0.0.22. So that's what this is all about right here, and that's the reason that R3 resolved the IP address of the PC. It's because it needed to forward back to it at layer two. So that's the back end of our conversation. Now, how do we test that gateway load balancing protocol is working? We know that this MAC address highlighted is assigned to R3. How could we simulate more devices over here? Well, if this is really working like it should be, check this out. Let's go to this PC, this router, and let's go to configuration mode. Let's go to interface FA0 slash zero, which is the interface right here that we're using. I'm going to do a shut. Now, a shut of the interface is going to wipe out any ARPs, ARP resolutions that have been done. So we do a do show ARP. We've got nothing because we have no interfaces at all. I'll do a no shutdown, bring it back up, and let's just verify that we have nothing in the ARP cache, which we don't. So now, if we ping that same destination, how will it work? Well, the PC is going to do an ARP request. The active virtual gateway is going to respond with an answer, and that answer very likely is going to be R2's virtual MAC address because it had the next highest. So if we had R3 at like 100 and R2 at like 5, we would have to send many, many ARP responses before we'd work our way down to R2. So let's just go to R2 for a moment, and let's just do a quick uh, peek. Show gateway load balancing protocol. And just to verify what he's managing, so we're, low, we're of a weighting of six. We're managing this MAC address right here. It was assigned by the active virtual gateway to us. And I'm betting that R1, when he responds to the next R, or does the next R reply to PC1, that he's going to hand out or that MAC address. He handed out R3's first, and now he's going to hand out this one. That's my belief. Let's take a look. Let's go back to the PC, and we'll do a do a ping over to 123.0.0.4. And the debug of ARP is still on. And there you go. Look at that. That's the MAC address, the virtual MAC address that R2 is managing. And you'll notice we didn't have the resolution where R2 is trying to figure out PC1. And I'll tell you why that is. R4 has a static route that says to return packets back to the 10 network, use R3. So if R4 had chosen to use R2, we might have had an ARP response, uh, ARP issue as well on the return where we would have seen it in the debug of this PC right here. Okay, the last one, because the weightings are 7, 6, and 5, I'm thinking if we do this again, R1, who's the active virtual gateway, is going to respond to the next ARP request with the virtual MAC address that he is managing. So we go back to R1 for a second. These are messages just as we started to configure R2 and R3. They're all set up now. And the MAC address that we are managing on R1 right here, that's the active, which is us, is this MAC address. So I'm thinking that's going to be the third one. And then it'll probably round robin, and we would have to send a boatload of packets and a boatload of ARP requests to actually see the, the, the waiting in action. So... Seven, six, and five is just the con concerning the order that we're handing them out. But eventually, there would be, for every seven of this MAC address, there would be six of this one, and there would be five of this one. But it would take very ma several packets to actually demonstrate that. So let's go back to the PC, and we'll do a shut. Give it a second to make sure it's shut down, and a no shutdown to make sure it's back up. And then we'll do a ping of that same address, 123.0.0.4. Now, if this were connected via a switch with spanning tree and port fast was not enabled for spanning tree on a switch, we might have to wait a full 30 seconds or so before we would even be able to get traffic into this broadcast domain. So just be aware, if you're using a switch, put port fast on all four of these ports on the switch just to make sure spanning tree doesn't slow you up. Okay. So let's take a look at our ARP request, and sure enough, there's the response. Again, it's the active virtual gateway that's doing the replies to all of these ARP requests, and he is 
round robining the results out to each of these PCs. Now that's pretty fun. Let me show you uh, a couple other things we can do to kick this up a couple notches. With HSRP in the demonstration I did on that, we did a tracked interface. And that's a great idea, by the way. And that means that if R1, for example, loses connectivity out this interface, he would be a very poor choice to start forwarding traffic. So with HSRP, we did a tracked interface. If we lost that interface, he would lose his priority and another router would take over as the active router. Well, with gateway load balancing protocol, check this out. If R1 loses this interface, he can still act as the active virtual gateway. He can still respond to ARP requests on this network. We just don't want him to forward any, Mac, any ARP responses that have the virtual MAC address that he is using. And why is that? Well, that's because if R1 really doesn't have connectivity to the 123 network, he would be a poor choice to forward traffic. So one of the requests that I had was to do gateway load balancing protocol, which we're doing. And another request was to cover and kind of discuss one of the features of SLAs or service level agreements inside of the Cisco IOS. And I thought, what a perfect opportunity to do exactly that. So here we go on R1. I'm going to walk through the config with you and talk about it as we go. In short, R1 is going to track his reachability to R4 through this interface. So if R1 can't reach the 123.0.0.4 IP address using FA01 as the interface to reach it, we want to go ahead and tell R1, who has a current weighting of 5, if we do a, uh, we can just scroll up right here, his current weighting is 5, for forwarding traffic, we can tell him to reduce his weighting by a 5. So we can give him a weighting of 0, which means he will no longer hand out his virtual MAC address that he's managing, which means that he will never be required to forward new packets for that MAC address through that interface or through itself. Now, there are a lot of issues surrounding that. It's not as cut and dry as it might seem. What if PCs have that MAC address cached? They still try to use them. Is that an issue? Yes, it is. So this is a discussion on what we can do to manipulate gateway load balancing protocol using SLAs to track our objects. So on R1, let's go to configuration mode and let's put in our tracking based on a service level agreement. I'm also going to turn on debugging for gateway load balancing protocols so we can see the activity as it happens. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an SLA. An SLA, I'm going to call it SLA1, that's simply going to do an echo request to 123.0.0.4 and it has to use this interface to get there. And that's important because if we have a routing protocol and we still can reach that network, but using the wrong interface, it defeats the purpose. So this is going to send a probe out every three seconds, it's going to time out after a thousand milliseconds or one second. And I'm now telling it to go ahead and start this SLA and put it into action. So it's now working. The next thing we want to do is we can go ahead into interface F800 and we can specify, check this out. I want you to track this object. And if that SLA and that tracked object, RTR stands for response time reporter. And if that response time reporter is reporting that we're not reaching that destination, I want you to decrement your weighting by five. So currently, Mr. R1, you have a weighting of five and we want to lower it by five if R4 is no longer reachable. So having said that, let's give it a test. Let's do a show. Gateway load balancing protocol. And we'll see at the moment, we have a weighting of five, configured as five. So R1 is going to hand out his MAC address periodically to customers based on the proportions of R1, R2, and R3 and their weights. So how do we make the track fail, the tracked object fail? Let's do a show track. So the tracked object is doing great. It's every three seconds is sending out a request and R4 is responding in the background. The way we can get them to fail is we can go to interface FA0 slash 1 and we can say game over like that. So game over is going to tell FA01, okay, the interface is shut and that's going to cause the tracked object, this response time reporter to also go to down. And now that's failing and check it out. Gateway load balancing protocol with the debugging on is just went from a weighting of five to a weighting of zero. Now, when new clients are asking for MAC or ARP resolution on this network segment, R1 is not going to hand out the MAC address that he is managing because he has a weighting of zero 
as far as how many times that should be handed out to the clients. Now, the problem is this. What if R1, who is still the active virtual gateway, has handed out all of the three virtual forwarding addresses or the MAC addresses in ARP responses, and some clients still have the virtual forward MAC address that R1 assigned to himself? Because his waiting is now zero, that's communicated, and one of the other devices, one of the other virtual forwarders will double up. So we can take a look and see who took over the MAC address ending in 101. Was it R2? And we can verify that with a simple show, gateway load balancing protocol. And it will show us that for forwarder one, which is this MAC address, that the active router is now 10.0.0.3. So R3 took it over and it's now responsible for that and it's forwarding packets. So even though R1 is, or may have handed out the virtual MAC address of 007 B4000101, that MAC address is currently being managed by 10003 because the waiting on R1 is zero. Now, if we went back to R1, and in R1, we went back to interface config, and we said, dear Mr. R1, we wanna say no shut on that interface. So that would bring the interface back up. That would modify his waiting from zero back to five. We could verify that because the tracked object is now going to be up right here. And a show gateway load balancing protocol can verify that. So we have a waiting of five, configured of five. And I think if we're lucky, we can see him take it back over. So currently it shows that the active router for that group or for that um, for that MAC address of 0101 is R3. And if we wait here just a moment, I think he will take that back over. And there we go. So just a moment longer, we have that MAC, same MAC address right here. And now we have active routers local with a waiting of five. So now things are back as they should be. So if we go to the PC, this is a lot of fun too. If we go to the PC right here and we say, I want to ping, let's do a debug ARP again. Ping of 123.0.0.4. We should receive, and we got our threes address again. I had to reboot uh, one of these guys. So we have the MAC address being responded to 103. That's our threes managed MAC address. If we did it again, And did the ping again. We should be getting 102, which is currently being managed by R2. And if we do it yet a third time with the shut and the no shut, give it a second to just make sure it really believes it's shut. And a no shut and then a ping again, we should get R1's virtual MAC address. So. R1's handing out all those ARP responses. He handed out R3's first, then R2's, then his own. And now that we have that, if we do a ping again, over to 123.0.0.4, the pings work great. Now here's what I'd like to do. As our final test, let's completely take out R1. And we'll just bring it down, we'll power it down while we're doing a ping. So I'll do a ping of, and my timers aren't really tight. They're the default of every three seconds for the hellos, and they time out for 10. So we may miss just a few pings, but let's do a ping of 123.0.0.4, and we'll repeat it, I don't know, let's say uh, 10,000 times. So we'll let that guy crank away in the background. I'm going to leave the tape running here. I'm going to simply power down R1. So R1 is now powered down. You can see the icon just went south on me there. And R2 is noticing, hey, I've heard about R1 for a while. And somebody's going to assume the role of the active virtual gateway. And also, somebody's going to pick up his virtual MAC address, which I'm still using. Let me break this. I'll do a Control shift 6 to break this. And let's do a Show ARP. You'll notice I'm still using that same virtual MAC address. Now, who has it? Is it R2 or R3? You could verify that just by asking them. You just do a Show Gateway Load Balancing Protocol and see who's active for that first forwarding group. And sure enough, it's router three. And that may be because he has the highest weight. So let's do this. If we powered off R3, it would still be maintained by R2. And so that's how gateway load balancing protocol operates. So the key here is that 
one guy is going to act as the active virtual gateway. What's he responsible for? He's responsible to hand out MAC addresses, virtual MAC addresses to himself and others, and then to respond to ARP requests with one of those virtual MAC addresses. If the active virtual gateway dies, the standby virtual gateway will take over and another router based on priority who has the highest priority in, this, in the waiting list will become the standby to the new active. And that's it. Gateway load balancing protocol. I appreciate you watching with me and have a great, great rest of the day.